this is Steve Hislop. I'd like you to join me on the Castro Honda RC45 for what should be a quick lap. As you pull up to the start here, you've always got the slight butterflies in your stomach, but the best bet is just to try and get really relaxed and try and settle into the, to the rhythm as quick as you can. As you pull away from the grandstand here, it's just hard acceleration right up through each gear to hopefully be hitting top gear just before you go through St. Ninian's Crossroads. There's usually always a bit of a bump here. I try to pull the handlebars to, to steady it a little bit. Um, and as you go over the, the peak of Bray Hill there, it's probably the most terrifying thing you'll ever do. Um, especially on a flying lap when you're coming through there in the region of about 170 miles per hour. Um, you start to decelerate just as the road narrows here and get real hard braking ready for quarter bridge because you're right back to first gear. Uh, although you're pulling quite high gearing on these bikes and it still seems hard to stop because first gear's geared for something over 100 miles an hour, 120 or something. You uh, accelerate hard out towards Braden Bridge, probably up to about fourth gear. Uh, just hard braking in here back a couple of gears, especially on the first lap you've got to watch because your tyres haven't really been on the left hand side there so you have to watch going into the left and even accelerating out of the right here um, it's hard acceleration up towards Union Mills the, uh, I usually like the, the double kink here that we're approaching now because you're actually just hooking top gear as you go into the left here and on a good quick lap the bike just goes a little bit lively there so you're actually on the back wheel cranked over and then it's back through the gears, real hard, um, back to about second gear down through the bottom, uh, quick shift up into third, and then drive hard all the way up the Balahatchin. The secret of Union Mills really is to come in steady and try and get on the gas as quick as possible because you carry the speed out onto the straight, and uh, especially on the big bike, it's not such a problem up the Balahatchin, but whereas if you were on a 250, you'd really need to be getting on the gas quick. Yep. Approaching the top of uh, Glenvine here, Balagiri Corner, I usually come back a gear, throw it in, and then hook top gear just as you go off the little step in the road there. It, it tends to keep the front wheel down uh, rather than be pawing, pawing at the ground. You have the hard drive down through Glenvine, and the, the left-hander here that we're approaching now, you can take absolutely flat in top gear, and then uh, you haul in the bars. It's quite hard to change direction there fast run right up through past the Crosby Hotel. As we crest the rise here, I usually just shut off a little bit before it, because if you actually hold the, the throttle flat, it, it tends to jump out of the top of the air rather than really, and uh, you get a little bit unstable. When we're approaching Griba Castle now, I usually start to get hard on the brakes just at the end of the, the black and white painted curb, back a couple of gears, then drive into the castle, back another gear gently get the power on through here and there because the road it's a bit of a funny camber as you exit there right back up through to fifth gear towards uh, Appledean here you've got to watch as you change direction that the road really drops off there and you can get the, the front wheel really getting a bit of a tank slapper uh, it's quite hard on the brakes approaching uh, Griba Bridge there back a couple of gears then you start to settle yourself now out towards uh, Mala Crane you back up into top gear, just hooking top before uh, Gorse Lee here, and uh, you've got to watch because as you exit this one you're running pretty close to the, the bale there, there's a bale on the side of the, the telegraph pole, you, you always think you're going to hit it, and then along, I start to break just about the two trees there, you can, uh, I usually come back to uh, second gear here, um, it's real hard acceleration now up towards Ballast Bar, I tend to short shift up to fourth gear, you have to be very gentle here, I've seen people crash there in the past very easily. Um, down now towards Dorns, you're getting a bit of a tank slapper down through the trees there, there's a little bit of a dip in the road, you've just got to really hang on. Back a gear for uh, Dorns there, and just let the bike run right out parallel with the curb, in towards the first part of Laurel Bank here. Uh, gently brake, back a gear, down into the bottom, and accelerate right up to Laurel, Laurel Bank proper hook back a gear again, back to about second gear here now, hard, right up, just follow the line of the bank in, second, third, fourth, a, a hook fifth just before the, the right hander there, back to fourth, run through the black dab here, you've got to watch here because you could lose the back very easily, uh, you've just got to feather the throttle in nicely up through there, up towards uh, Glen Helen, 
come back another couple of gears here, you back to about third gear, and then in towards Glen Helen proper. And then just let the tyres really feel the camber of the road there. It's a real strange one there. It's a hard drive up towards Ceres. And again, you've just got to watch. You could, I mean, with the power of the 750 now, you could really high side coming out there. So you've just got to be, it's, it's like gaining feel with the road and the feel of the throttle and just feathering it in nicely. You've got the fast, fast drive up Craig Willie's Hill right out onto Grunky Voddy. You're pulling top gear by the time you get out onto here. There's usually a big wheelie there, it is. And then along Grunky Voddy. You're probably pulling in the region about 100 and 60 along here, 65 possibly. Uh, this year I was having to roll the throttle through the end. In the past I've been able to hold it through flat out there, right down to the 11th, but it was just the bike was just wandering a little bit too much this year, so I was having to watch there. Through the bottom of the 11th, back, back to fourth there, and then it's real hard, back up into top just about now, getting along to towards Handley's, um, hard on the brakes. And again, it's like a. It feels like the big dipper here. So there's a bit of a dip in the middle of the road, and you've just got to feed the power in gently as you get through there, or you'd lose the back end. Um, you drop down onto this little straight towards the top of Bagaro. Usually, get a big wheelie there. If the wind gets under that, it can really push the thing in the air, and you struggle to get it back in the right direction for Bagaro. Through the top of Bagaro, which is a real demanding corner. Then I always just have to brace myself up for this one. I usually come back to fifth, hold the throttle back a bit, and then just brace it through the bottom because it really t belts you down into the tank. You can do your you br bruise all your chest there. Into the 13th now. Um, this is a funny one. You've got to watch that there's a bit of a bump there in the road and it can kick the back wheel in the air. You've got to let it settle before you try and get real back on the gas coming out towards Kirk Michael. Um, and then you've got the long drop down in towards Douglas Road corner. I just look for a little dot on the wall here. I peel off just a bit of yellow, little yellow dot there. Uh, and then ride the ripples through here. It's, it's ever so bumpy through Kirk Michael, and you've just actually got to again let the just let the bike feel the road sort of style. This is probably one of the the, the places where you get the uh, the biggest impression of speed between the houses because you, again you'll be pulling somewhere in the region of about 160. As you approach Ren Cullen here, I just hook back a gear, usually pulling the handlebars, do a bit of a wheelie show off. Um, it's good fun there, I've always enjoyed it. And another wheelie just as you exit. And uh, you usually hook top gear just as you come down that little drop in the road and into uh, Bishop's Court. This is probably one of the fastest sections uh, on the whole circuit now. It's quite hard changing direction at the speed you're going along here towards Alpine Cottage, especially this, this next left right section here. You seem to just be pushing like a, real hard on your forearms and then back a gear through Alpine proper there, um, back up into top and then you have quite a steady ride through to Balaf now actually. It's fast but it's probably one of the smoothest parts of the whole course and then it's real hard braking right back through the gearbox. I usually just, I don't jump a laugh, I just la try and land steady on the front wheel and get as hard on the, the gas as possible. And Because uh, it's a long, long straight out towards Balakrai. And the thing is, if you're up in the air, I think you're wasting time. You're better to get back on the gas and uh, get on your way. In towards uh, Balakrai here, usually I can hold it fairly fast around there, but this year again, just because of some of the little handling problems we were having, I was having to back off quite a bit and try and get the bike pointed straight before I went over the bump. Keep it steady. I come back a gear in towards Quarry Bend. Come round here. Gentle round the left. But as soon as you're around it, you're starting to feed it on big time again. Out. You usually hook top gear just about here and out onto the start of Salby Straight, which has become very bumpy over the last... Well, I missed the TT last year and I've found a big problem this year with the bumps. With all the heavy traffic the island's got at the moment, it's real bumpy. And this used to be quite smooth along Solby, and now at the speed we're going at, this is starting to break up again. But uh, you're probably pulling in the region 170, 80 mile an hour along here, so it takes some stopping for Solby Bridge, but it's back, back to setting gear, pitch it into Solby, get a little bit wheelie as you accelerate away from there, up a couple of gears, short shift. Again, this is a real bumpy section. We've just got Simon back here. Um, Simon's on his 600. Oh, I have to back off a bit there. 
was going to go through there, but as you see, Simon closed the door. But um, down through the bottom of Kerrimore, and now approaching probably one of the bumpiest sections of the lot along through Glen Duff towards Glen Tramon. Over the last three years, this had become very bumpy, and uh, it's a case of uh, trying to go through here flat out, but I think you only can do it about every second lap. You've hardly got any strength to do it every lap. Um, approaching Glen Tramon now, I usually shut off just as I'm starting to go around this left hand. Uh, back, back about two gears, accelerate down into Glen Tramon, right in the, the corner here, back a gear, and then hard acceleration away through towards Sky Hill. You get right back up into top gear as you come through. The, there's a little blind curb jumps out of here, just on the left there. There it is. You just got to watch and not clip that. And then along towards Sky Hill, you just hook back a, a gear here. Try and hold it in the camber. There's a funny camber there. You've got to try and hold it tight into the right. It helps you get through the left and next right sequence. And then along over Glen Alden Bridge. Usually try and save top gear, just hook top gear as I'm going over the bridge. It tends to stop the bike wheeling and you can get through the next right a bit easier. And then along another real bumpy section towards Schoolhouse. Just gently come back a couple of gears and try and let the bike just feel its way over the ripples there. Uh, start to break just about the crossroads there and right back to first gear for Parliament Square. It's real hard to try to judge these some of these corners actually after you've been going so fast on the front. 5th and 6th gear corners, actually coming back to a place like that, you just got to watch, you could easily be high sided if you give it a lot of stick in first gear. You can climb up towards Whitegates here now, this is probably one of the bumpiest parts of the course as well, all the section through towards Ramsey is getting real bad now, the surface changes a bit there at Stella Maris and it's a total different circuit up the mountain, you actually start to get into a, a certain aspect of the circuit where it's almost like a short circuit again, whereas the bottom section is very bumpy. It's a hard climb up here towards the waterworks now. Just have to watch and catch as many people on slower bikes. Just got to be aware of them. This second part of the waterworks, this one can really catch you. You just got to hold it in tight because you, you always end up running out of road there. And a hard acceleration up through towards tower bends. If the watch there, there's a bit of a dip on the inside of the, the corner there. You can really catch you out and up through towards the gooseneck. It's quite hard breaking in towards this. And again, you've just got to watch. It's, it's a real short circuit corner, but because of all the, the heavy road traffic, the actual uh, surface is very shiny and you could lose the front very easily there. This, this to me is the... In the past, I've never really enjoyed the mountain, but this year I've really enjoyed it. Uh, all through practice and the races, I've really enjoyed the, the mountain section because I think it's probably just the fact that it's so smooth now. Um, in the past, I used to love all the bumpy bits in the bottom, but I think this year I'm, my mind's more towards short circuit racing and I've discovered that the mountain section's probably the best now. Up towards uh, Guthrie's here, this is real nice if you get these sort of three left-handers there taken in a winner and then uh, back about three gears, gently around Guthrie's and then change up a couple of gears there, let the motor, motor pull, just short shift and use the whole torque of the engine. I think this is where the Honda engine scored round the Isle of Man. I mean, as we've seen with the, the results in the Formula One race, I mean, there's, I think it was eight Hondas in the top ten. So it just shows you that the engine's well suited to the Isle of Man. Um, again, this is probably one of the highest speed sections along here. You're pulling somewhere in the region about 170 mile an hour along here. and. When I ride a 250 along here, it's just like a, a comfortable uh, straight, you can relax, but on the big bike, you've got to watch because these little kinks become big corners. Um, you just got to watch. Again, coming out, out at the end of that hillside there at the East Mountain Box, the wind can often catch you and really push you into the side of the road, so you've got to allow for that. And uh, you really want to be on the edge of the, the tarmac on the grass, but because of the wind, you've, you've got to compensate for it. These are all things that you never even think about on a short circuit, but when you're riding around here, it's a total different case. Approaching the black hat, you usually come back to fourth gear for this one, and then this is one of the nicest sections of the whole course going around the veranda. It's like four bends taken in one, and you can see, as you can see, the, the white line dashing back and forth there. 
but uh, if you get that one right, you can really carry your speed right along the mountainside towards the bungalow bridge here. Back up at the top, then back to fourth gear for this. And then again, hard acceleration towards the bungalow. You can get right back up into top gear here. Just catching the lad on a 250 here, actually. There they are. He's just actually ran a wee bit wide there. I was just messed up a little bit on my braking there by the fact that I'd caught that lad. It just shows you how, I mean, everybody can make mistakes, but um, I was just caught out a little bit there. Up towards the highest part of the course now at Brandywell. Usually, just before the last kink here, I usually come back a gear and then hook back another gear here and get hard on the gas again. As soon as you get round there, you can you usually sense your engine starting to pick up revs again because it's a fair drop-off. Um, it doesn't appear that way, but it's amazing how the engine responds. As soon as you get round, round the 30 second here, you're really flying. And then you approach Windy Corner. This is another one that you've just got to allow for the, the windy conditions. Sometimes the wind blowing up the valley can hold the bike upright and it doesn't want to, to go into the corner. It can really catch you out if you were really cutting things fine. I think you'd struggle. And along towards the 33rd, right up in the top gear along here. It's one of the sections where you've really got to let all the road work for you. Just try and get yourself lined up nicely on the right hand side, back a gear, back to fifth for the 33rd. And if you get this one right, it's a real good satisfaction getting that one right. Up, back at the top, approaching Keppel, hard on the brakes, back to third gear, and then gently around there. And this is a major drop off now. Down around Kate's Cottage and down towards Cragna Bar. You get a big wheelie in a minute just as you go over this rise here. And then just as the road starts to level off, I get hard on the brakes and back to second gear for Cragna Bar. It's one of those corners that, because of the camber of it, can really suck you in, so you've got to watch, you've got to allow for that. Just let the bike feel itself round and then hard, hard acceleration right back up into top top gear, probably pulling around 175 down through the cutting here, 175, possibly 80 mile an hour through the narrow section here, and then it takes some real heavy braking to stop for brandish. I usually come back to second gear on the big bike, and then just fire it out in second, right back up to, usually pull just probably fifth gear before Hillbury, and then a hook back to fourth and get it on the it would probably pull through in fifth, but you're better to hook back a gear just to steady the bike and then get on the drive hard up to fifth and then even short shift up, up into top gear here and let the bike go around Crunkney Motor. This is weird because there's so many different levels of tar there, it, it goes, it sort of kicks you up in there, so you've just got to let it ride round itself. And then hard braking back to second gear for signpost up to fourth. Down around Bedstead. Got to watch, there was a bit of a drop off in the road there this year. It was, it was catching the front wheel a little bit. Hard braking, back to third, round the nook, and then down towards probably the slowest corner on the whole circuit, Governor's Bridge. After travelling so fast on the mountain, it's, you struggle to stop for this one. And gently round the end of the, the little white wall there. And then this section. Luckily it's been fairly dry this year, but that can be real slippy under the trees here because it's a section of road that's hardly ever used. And then out onto Glen Crutchery Road and uh, onto the finish line, up into top gear for what should be a quick lap.